everyone and welcome back to my channel and today we're going to be talking about my Catacetum Orchid collection. Now this is a collection that I've rapidly accumulated this year. I think in part due to the fact that I got one and just became obsessed with them. I absolutely love their growth habit, how plump they get, how rapidly their roots grow but also by the fact that potentially as Britain may or may not leave the EU it's still an absolute nightmare without a deal. Um, we might not be able to get orchids as easily so I felt a little bit of Brexit pressure to buy orchids. I'm not gonna lie which is probably not a good thing for me because I already uh, I'm not particularly good at controlling my orchid habits. So today we're gonna talk about my catacetums and I've bought a lot of these kind of just one or two back rolled divisions uh, I've shown a few of these on camera in unboxings, but most of the smaller ones I haven't actually shown you guys. So I thought I would show you the progress and maybe get some ideas from you and let you know the plans that I have for going into dormancy and maybe some of them sort of delaying dormancy a little bit. So we're going to talk about them in a few different sections. So I will split this into a few stages and firstly we will talk about my Cloesias and the Cloesia hybrids that I have and this is really what started me off with the Catacetum kind of obsession and firstly I will talk to you a little bit about the seedling or back bulb division Cloesias that I have and then I will take you in and look at the adult Cloesias that I have. Okay, so we'll start off by looking at the first Cloesia that you guys probably saw me unbox in the Orchid Garden un unboxing. And this is the Cloesia Vachavitsi. And this one came a lot bigger than I thought, but it's definitely fattened up a huge amount since I actually got it. I repotted it because I wasn't comfortable with the mix it was in. And you can see that the roots kind of continue growing. It's in a slightly bigger pot maybe than it should be, um, but I don't think it's bothered it that much considering how big this bulb has grown compared to the other bulbs. And this, yeah, this one's grown really nicely for me. I'm really, really happy with its progress. And I'm not sure exactly when it will be going into dormancy. I'm kind of reducing watering slightly because it's not growing anymore at this stage. So I don't know at what stage they do start to go into dormancy um, or what stage they should be induced into dormancy. I kind of was assuming as the weather was cooling down that they'd kind of gradually I'd tail off the watering and they'd go into dormancy. So probably in the next few weeks I'll, I'll cut down watering and then over winter it won't have any watering at all while it's in dormancy. And then hopefully in spring it'll put out some nice, a nice new growth. It might even be flower ring size next year. What do you guys think? Looking at the bulb progression, hopefully next year maybe, next winter I'll get some flowers and this is one that blooms sort of mid dormancy uh, so I mean maybe we'll even get some flowers this year but I doubt it because it was advertised as being sort of two to three years from flowering size but you never know so that is the Cloesia Vachavitsi. Next up we'll look at one of my kind of sadder stories so this is a Catacetum Rebecca Northern Grapefruit Pink crossed with Mormodes Elegans for album and I think that's meant to be SVO not SOV and this one I got as a back bulb division very very cheap something like five pounds um, which is just this back bulb here which then put out this new growth and then unfortunately this new growth got really really attacked by thrips which was a real, real shame. And I was really disappointed. Um, but its leaves now are coming through clean after I've dealt with the thrips invasion that I had. And if you wanna check out that video um, with me talking a bit more about the issues I've had with thrips, I will link it down below and also in the corner of this video. So it put out this new growth and then this new growth put out two little nubs on either side and grew this new growth and it's putting roots down into the media. There aren't that many at this stage. I did find one that was kind of at the edge, but I think it's still very early on in the root growing process. Um, at exactly the wrong time of year to be starting its new growths. However, I'm really worried that if I was to force dormancy on this, that I would just kill the plant. 
because it's only got this shriveled back bulb as its source of energy. I know that they are very resilient, but I'm more inclined to keep pushing through. I've got heat mats and I've got artificial lights and I can control the temperature in my grow room to some extent so I'll keep it above sort of 20 degrees celsius and if I put them on heat mats as well it should accelerate their growth and I'm just going to keep going with it and let it mature at least one of these growths uh, whichever one it wants to mature first and yeah we will see what that does to the plant. I'll record it and at least then we've got an indication of what happens when you push your dormancy later. I really can't see it doing any harm as long as the plant has a dormancy, but you know, we will see. While it's actively growing, I will let it actively grow until it looks like it's got enough stored energy for me to then be happy that next year it'll push out a really nice new growth. As I said, this is my first year growing Catacetums and Catacetinae, so let me know what you think about this kind of thought process, but I'm inclined to not withhold water at this stage from this plant. In other words, this is just kind of on a flipped season dormancy, basically, because I've been given back bulb divisions, which have put out new growths exactly as they should be maturing their new growths so you know a lot of people do flip season dormancy on different hemispheres i know that that's related to the temperature of your environment and the season as well uh, but i can control that so we'll see how this goes so that is the catacetum rebecca northern grapefruit pink crossed with more modes elegans bar album and that's got really beautiful flowers so i'm super excited for when that does bloom eventually now this next one i actually knocked off a shelf um so i repotted it it was uh, I did keep it in the moss that it came in because the moss looked super fresh and yeah it it looked like a really nice potting media and then I knocked it off the shelf and I'd broken leaves so yeah it wasn't particularly sturdy in its pot because it was in a tiny tiny little pot and it put out two new growths and yeah it just got knocked over so I repotted it into my ceramis mix which I found actually works really really well the only uh back bulb that I've had in the ceramis mix from the start that put out its new growth and then its new roots into the ceramis mix is doing the best out of all of them so I really think it's a really great media you see some of the roots there um, I'm really really happy with this mix for my courtesy today so I think next year they're all going to be in a similar kind of mix so this is basically a little bit of lecker at the bottom just because I don't need ceramis all the way down and then a mixture of ceramis and lecker and then a top layer of the alpine horticultural grit and this means that it stops any algae or mold forming on top of the ceramis because ceramis stays very moist and it's just in a little DIY self-watering pot that I've made out of an old drinks bottle so yeah that one it's uh, not looking the best because I've knocked it over I think the new growths are nearly kind of finished maybe this leaf will get bigger but I think that they are almost done. So yeah, it's got two directions of growth though, which is quite cool. So that is the, sorry, Clawesia Jumbo Grace. I don't think I said that. So it's Clawesia Jumbo Grace. And this is another Clawesia Jumbo Grace. And this is the very first orchid that I got. I bought it really cheap off eBay as a back bulb division. So it came with these two pathetic little back bulbs um, it was fine I, I didn't pay much at all for it so I wasn't really expecting very much uh, but I it put out a new growth very quickly which I watered before I went away and rotted so <laughs> this was my first one and this was my I guess my test catacetum and I failed the test and I rotted the new growth so it then thought about what it was going to do for a while and decided to put out another new growth. So we're going to be okay, but obviously it's now set back and we'll at the end of the growing season as they're kind of approaching going into dormancy and I've got a new growth yet again. So again, I'm going to do the same with this one as the last one. I'm just going to let it grow as big as I can get it and then I will force it into dormancy. But I'm not going to force it into dormancy at this stage because, you know, I don't want to really set the plant back and it's still actively growing so I'm not going to force a plant to do something that it's not comfortable with basically. <laughs> okay and this one is probably my best um, success with a catacetum. So this is the Cloesia Grace Dunn uh, crossed with self and this is from a seller that I've used frequently for these back bulb divisions 
and that is Maya Orchids in Slovenia. And I absolutely love this seller. You can get back bulb divisions for five pounds, ten pound if uh, if it's a slightly bigger one. And yeah, still combined postage, and the postage is really good. The plants have always been really healthy, so I really really like this seller. This one as a test, instead of putting into sphagnum, I put straight into a, a kind of DIY. I guess it's a little bit similar to the PET method, to be honest. Um, so we've got. Lecca at the bottom in the reservoir because Lecca gives more air spaces than Ceramis. So the reservoir, you don't need Ceramis in it. It's full of water. We want as much water volume as possible. So Lecca was the best option. And then got Ceramis up to about here. And then a top layer of the Alpine horticultural grit. And this one is doing really, really well. And I'm really pleased with it. And you can see the the root growth, the roots going down into the reservoir, going down to the reservoir. It's a very happy orchid and it just keeps putting out more and more and more roots. So I'm really proud of this one actually. And it's a very vigorous hybrid. I guess also I got it right from the start with the culture on this one, whereas the others uh, I had a little, a few setbacks or a few little issues. And this is the resulting kind of difference. So if we compare this one to this one, and I actually got this one first. Yeah, <laughs> not really any comparison, is there? This one's doing really well. It's obviously only a small back bulb division that I got it from, but I think that this is going to be quite a big new growth. If you kind of imagine it's still putting out new leaves it's not anywhere near finished uh, so yeah I'll let this finish its new growth and then I'll start cutting water back and this is kind of trial and error for me because I'm very new to catacetums and I'm trying out new methods as well so this is probably quite a high risk kind of situation but I'm all for trying new things and I'm absolutely in love with catacetums and they seem to be very forgiving so long as obviously you don't rot them so yeah, that is my proudest little Cloesia there. And finally, we've got another Cloesia grace done. So you may notice I have duplicates. This is because the seller that I buy from uh, gives you free back bulb divisions when you buy orchids. So I was buying back bulb divisions from, and then I was getting free ones and I keep getting duplicates. So, uh, I'm not complaining at all and this one's done really well for me actually so this is the size of the back bulb division that I was given which had a new growth already starting when I got it it was a very tiny little nub but it was starting and yeah it's done very well it's in semi-hydro not ceramis and I still can't see any roots so I really don't think that this has a particularly good root system so I'm oh okay I can see some roots but they're just not as extensive as the roots in the ceramis but it's uh, quite a big new growth that it's put out for me. It's just obviously not developed an extensive root system. So I think that's a really interesting observation considering I got all of these around the same time because I was ordering the back bulbs and then she was chucking the free <laughs> back bulbs in with them, which is lovely. It's really nice. Like I, I love the seller and I'm really sorry that if we do leave the EU, I may not be able to buy orchids from them again. So this is again why I've been kind of stockpiling um, orchids that I've wanted for a while and wanted to try out for a while I've just been like I'm just going to go for it because I might not get the opportunity easily again um, for a reasonable price. So those are my Cloesia seedlings and back bulb divisions. So we're now going to move on to my only real mature really kind of large Cloesia. So this is the Cloesia Dodsoniana. And this one came up from Spicotic Plants in the UK and I just had to get it because the Dodsoniana and the Rossiliana are very similar and they don't come up very often and they had both of them but the Dodsoniana looked bigger uh, so I chose the most vigorous looking one that they had and it I'll see if I can find some video footage because I did film when it came because it had what I thought were spider mites and it's had severe spider mite damage to it you can see the leaves are just irreparably damaged here they're all pitted obviously I've got rid of the spider mites there's no spider mites now but it came with what I thought was a spider mite infestation which actually 
was a predator mite infestation. So Spice Sotic had treated the spider mites that it had come with, with predator mites, and then I killed all the predator mites. But it's fine, we got rid of the mites. I think the predator mites had already dealt with the spider mites and then I just killed off the predator mites. So it was fine. Uh, so this is quite a large plant, as you can see. So it came with this growth and this growth, which have since matured in my care. They weren't at the stage where you could see the bulbs before, they were just kind of leafy growths. So they've got really nice big fat bulbs now. And as you can see, they've now started more new growths. So I've got this new growth, this new growth, and then three from this tiny little back bulb here. So yeah, we've got five new growths on this one. Um, and I don't know what to do with it because it's not like with the back bulbs where we don't have reserves here. We've got loads of reserves. So do I force it into dormancy? I guess so, but they're just putting out nice new roots. Um, so I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to do with this one. Again, my instinct is to just kind of leave it a little bit later maybe, and maybe just get it to get this growth a little bit bigger. These ones, we maybe won't worry about quite so much. They're off a back bulb. I don't know why it's put out three new growths from that tiny, tiny little back bulb, as opposed to the one that we've got coming from each of the bigger bulbs there. But yeah, it's a really great plant. It's really vigorous. I'm really, really pleased with it. And obviously, Clawesias can be a little bit harder to obtain than a lot of the Catacetinae. So to get a really nice specimen size one like this, uh, it's quite a big thing, <laughs> quite a hard thing to find. So really exciting that it's got such nice big fat bulbs and we'll see what happens over winter. And this guy here is the Chloesia Rebecca Northern Grapefruit Pink crossed with Catacetum Cereodes. Uh, SVO Darkness. This is one that I got in one of my later hauls, which I'll link you to uh, in the corner here. And this uh, it arrived absolutely massive. It hasn't really grown anymore, I don't think. Um, it's super fat and it just kind of leans over the pot. I did repot them after I got them. And we can actually see that I've got a new root tip growth here. And there's a few more, so it's growing its roots even after I've repotted it. Um, I was kind of thinking that it was near going into dormancy, but it's putting out this new leaf. I'm not really sure what it's doing. It's going to be a lot of me saying, I'm not really sure what it's doing, because I'm new to Catacetum, so I'm just kind of figuring it out as I go along, and I thought I'd film this so that we can learn together, and obviously people can chime in who've got lots of experience with growing these um, but obviously I am going for a slightly different growing method so yeah we'll see how this goes right <laughs> but yeah this one's absolutely huge plant I can take no credit for this at all it came like this pretty much I think it might have plumped up a bit more because we've got a bit more root growth as well so yeah that's my Chloe Sierra Rebecca Northern grapefruit pink crossed with Catacetum Cereodes SVO Darkness and this is a Sunset Valley Orchid. And next we have the Clawacetum Raymond Lerner Select, which is the one I got from Spice Sotic again. And I did do the unboxing with you guys for this one. And it's definitely fattened more, but in a really weird way. It's odd. It didn't really have many roots, so I'm not sure how it's managed to fatten more since I got it. Um, but yeah. I think it was possibly a new growth that was taken off. There's no back bulbs or anything. It's a bit of a weird one. Um, yeah, so at least it's fattened up some since I got it. So that's good. And this is a Clawacetum Pierre Cure crossed with Catacetum Expansum. And I got this one from Orchid Garden um, because it, again, was quite cheap. But it was infested with spider mites when I got it. I didn't film the unboxing and afterwards I was kind of like, let's just pretend this didn't happen because I then had to 
isolate them and completely treat them because they were absolutely infested and if it's a mild kind of spider mite infestation I'm happy to just treat them and put them in my grow room but for plants that are like dripping in spider mites you don't know if some are, have escaped treatment so this one stayed in isolation for a while and it looks like we did completely get rid of the spider mites with the first treatment no more signs of spider mites lots of spider mites sort of pitting on the leaves but luckily nothing else seems to have come of it um, so you, as you can see we've got quite a few back bulbs the connection between these is really really loose and it's put out a really nice new growth it was about half the size when i got it so i can't take credit for it um, i've grown it on as you can see it's grown more roots down into the lacquer i put this one into semi hydro i've tried a few different growing methods to kind of see what works best for me in my environment which is the advantage of when you get lots of an orchid type you can really trial it out and see what works best for you in your environment within reason obviously you don't want to endanger the plants and uh, next we're going to talk about my other types of catechitinae and again we'll start off with my little back bulb divisions and then go on to the larger plants that i do have sorry the sun keeps dipping in and out so we're getting kind of odd lighting here this is my catechitum piliatum jumbo green gold again reasonable size division and it was actually leafed when i got it and the leaves did drop and then it put out more new growths and um, so it put out two and one didn't make it didn't progress any further uh, but this one did so i repotted and popped it into a mix that had worked really well for me. So we've got the lecker at the bottom and then a bit of a mixture of ceramis and pumice for a bit more aeration. And then we've got a layer of the alpine horticultural grit at the top. And you probably can't see very well because of the sun kind of glaring off, but this one's got quite a good root system already, even though the new growth isn't actually that big. And I haven't been holding off with waterings with these new growths because, well, I didn't really see the sense in it. You want to hold off watering to stop rotting the new growth. So when they first put out new growths, obviously I don't water. As soon as the roots get down to the media, I have been watering. Um, they haven't rotted. I've been watering sparingly to start with and then once it's got roots fully down into the media in all of the cases, I've then kept the semi-hydro reservoir just full constantly of nutrient solution. So yeah, uh, so far I only had that one rotting incident with the first Cloesia that I bought as that back world division, but the rest of them I haven't rotted at all, uh, which is good. So yeah, uh, this one's a very vigorous grower, as you can see, lots of roots, new growth. Again, I'm just gonna let this new growth keep going until it's big enough and then I can put it into dormancy. We will see how that goes. And the rest of them are actually all freebies. So this one is, a baranium? I'm not sure. Sorry, I can't really read that. Um, because they were just kind of free divisions put in, I haven't looked into them that closely. I just was like, ooh, yay, and started growing them. Uh, crossed with tigrinum. So this one, again, suffered hugely with my thrips issues. Um, but it's continued putting out its new growth. And obviously the newest leaves you can see aren't affected. It's just the old leaves that have been affected and munched. And it's now actually started another new growth just down there. Um, so this one seems to be doing quite well. It's again, very small new growths. Um, and again, I'm just gonna let it mature its new growth or at least get its new growth quite a bit bigger before I start inducing dormancy. Uh, I'll put them on a heat mat starting now so that they're at maximum growth capacity. And this one didn't come with um, a tag, so I did email them. Apparently it's Sick Nodes TLDC Purple Frilled Lizard and it came with quite a few spider mites actually, um, or rather quite a lot of spider mite damage and just a few spider mites that I got rid of, but I think the grower had had issues maybe with spider mites for it. Yeah, this one's again in the same sort of system. Seems to be doing okay, but not growing particularly fast. And this one is Catacetum denticulatum crossed with 
Oh no, it's just a denticulatum. Uh, so I've actually got three denticulatums now. Two of them are just the tiniest, tiniest little divisions. They're literally like pea-sized pseudobulbs that they chucked in. Um, and one of those has just started a new growth actually. And um, the other one is still kind of, I've just got it in some dry moss waiting to see what I can do with it. Um, again, the problem with when you get lots of freebies, but you know, I don't mind having multiples of orchids at all. And so this one started a really weird growth pattern in that it started two new growths from nodes higher up. I don't know if there were no new nodes available at the base of the plant, but for whatever reason, it started its growths in really awkward places. Um, but at least I guess this meant that the roots have stayed dry. Um, actually, I don't think it's a good thing actually. Look, we've got the root tips there. They're kind of drying up a little bit. I've been trying to mist them. It does this particular little tiny cakey new growth, whatever it is, does have two roots down into the media. Um, the rest seem to be having issues getting down there because of the height of the plant. So I'm hoping that they will at some point branch or continue their growth because they've not been damaged at all. And that will often happen with catacetum roots. Uh, sorry, I keep losing my voice from this. I've got a bit of a cold at the moment. And this is the first new growth that started on it and all of the roots of that have actually got down into the media, which is great. So you can see some starting the side there. And this one I think is from that other, oh no, this is from the same one. So you've got one here at the side and one here. Um, yeah, so that is my kind of back bulb seedling division types for the catacetum types. And to talk about some of the slightly bigger ones, this is the Moniarara Millennium Magic Witchcraft, which I got from Buscal Orchidees with the Iwanagara Apple Blossom. And it's plumped up a little bit. It's kind of burst its leaves. Um, it's not really done a huge amount. I did leave it in this sleeve because it had loads of roots and I just was absolutely dreading disturbing it. And I kind of thought, tightly packed sphagnum, it might like it anyway. Um, but yeah, it hasn't done that much in terms of growth. So hopefully next year will be a better year when I can start it off from scratch and I will repot it as soon as it goes into dormancy. This is the Cycnodes Jumbo Puff and really nice big growth on this one. You can see it's probably gonna be around the same size as the last new growth. Uh, it's still working on this leaf, I think. Uh, at that point, it probably will have finished growing. I can't see any more leaves starting in it. So this is one I got from Spisotic again. Put it into a mix of pumice and leca. Seems to be doing well. The old roots seem to still be alive. So repotting is probably not advisable with these, but I did it anyway because I absolutely hate keeping orchids in the old media that they come in because there's just inevitably pests in the media whenever I get an orchid for some reason. Then we also have a Mormodes, and this is Mormodes Moronoi. And this one was doing really, really well. Um, it was a little back bulb division. It was growing amazingly, and then the back bulb rotted. Uh, so, yeah, it's not really got a back bulb anymore. It's just one new growth. Still quite a big new growth. Uh, we don't have an amazing root system. We did, and they seem to have sort of died off. So I'm not really sure what's going on with this orchid at the moment. And maybe it wasn't the best thing to start with for a beginner, uh, but it was just a really cheap back bowl division. So I thought I'd give it a go. And we did have some good roots, but I think they are now dead. They used to be here. I was looking for them to show you guys, and I realised that they'd actually died. So... I don't know if it's just the cool down, whether this one is a really hot grower and needs a much hotter environment. Um, so I'll pop it onto the heat mat and see if we can get it a little bit bigger before dormancy, but it might just be best to let it go into dormancy. I'm not sure. Let me know what you think, guys. Is this big enough? Um, it's not really. It's not finished growing, but I'm not really sure what to do with it. So any thoughts greatly appreciated. 
This is the Moni Arara Painted Desert SVO, crossed with courtesy to Milana Davison Foxtail, that it got in the unboxing video, where I also got the Cloesia Rebecca Northern, crossed with courtesy to Suriodes. And these are both Sunset Valley Orchids. I repotted this one when I got it. The root growth has continued. I've got it in a mix of Ceramis, Pumice and Lecca in a self-watering system. It seems to like it. Um, I'll keep it in this for next year. Again, shouldn't really repot catacetums when they're at this stage of growth or when they've got roots down into the media, but I did it anyway because I hate pests. And, and last, but by no means least, I've saved the best till last, guys, we've got the catacetum orchid glade Jack of Diamonds, which is an awarded variety. And this one I got from an eBay seller in Poland called Beautiful Orchids, and I got this back in, I think it was July. Um, yeah, it was July because it was like a birthday haul type thing. Uh, I just got a few like novelty fowls and this big boy and it's continued growing. It had quite a large growth when I got it. I'd say probably like to here maybe. So I can't really take credit for this, um, but it's continued growing. I repotted it into semi-hydro with Lekka and it didn't even skip a beat. Just carried on chucking out new roots. Really, really vigorous orchid. And I mean, despite the... We'll just admire the leaf size for a little bit because it's absolutely huge. But we have a flower spike, uh, which I'm super, super happy about. I think we must have dropped a bud here as well because it did have a bud here. So it's obviously blasted one of these, which is a little bit annoying, but looks like we've got plenty still to come. So I'm just gonna count the buds. So I'm counting eight buds here in total, I think. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine maybe? And these ones are supposed to be absolutely massive flowers. So it's got quite a lot of piliatum in, I think. We'll have to wait and see what the flowers look like because I'm super, super excited. And uh, the Orchid Glade is a really, really nice hybrid. And as you can see, it's very vigorous and easy to grow and apparently easy to bloom. And it's blooming, obviously, while still fully leafed out here. Uh, the spike has grown quite long. Unfortunately, it's grown towards the wall because it's directly under my Gemma LED grow lights. And I think whether it, this is at the back of the shelf, uh, sort of against the wall, and where the Gemma LED grow light hits the wall, the wall is very bright. So obviously the flower spike has decided it would rather go in that direction. But I'm super excited to show you guys these flowers when it does bloom eventually. So that has been my Catacetum orchid update and I've shown you guys all of my Catacetum orchids now um, except for a few tiny tiny little back bulbs that aren't really doing very much and I'm not totally sure if they'll make it or not. Um, but yeah, let me know what you think about the various kind of stages of growth that I've got going on right at the end of a growing season and whether you think it's kind of a viable idea to push the dormancy later or do it like a flipped dormancy just to get these new growths actually to a stage where I feel like they've got enough energy stored to sustain through dormancy. Um, and yeah, those have been my Catacetum orchids. So thank you so much for watching today, guys. And let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. And I will see you guys later. Bye.